I'm about to lose control and, and I, I think, think I, I like it. it. <laughs> Rosanna, the soundtrack of our lives. Uh, I'm so excited. The Pointer Sisters, terrific together, terrific. But whatever happened to them and what was going on behind the scenes? Lots of stuff. Yeah, uh, true. They were turning out great hits for everybody. Uh, but hey, apparently there was some drama. There were some highs. There were some lows. Let's go to Ruth Pointer's new book. There it is, her memoir. Still so excited. My life is a Pointer sister. Ruth Pointer, honored to have you here. Thank you. Boy, oh boy. Your music makes us so happy oh. and of course brings back such great memories. Thank you so much. So the book, still so excited. I have to say it got me intrigued from the very, very first lines mm. in, in the book. And the, in the introduction, this is what you say. There are just some things you should never have to tell your children. I've always tried to shield my kids from my past. But basically, you were opening up Pandora's box when you wrote this book. Yeah, yeah. What's How in there? Well, it's just what was going on behind the scenes for me, you know. And uh, it was not pretty all the time. And I was a parent of when I first started singing. I was a parent of two children. And I had been in a domestic uh, violent relationship. And it turned me around to the point where I, I had that, you know, I had that drive that I was never going to let a man, you know, control my life and I'm going to never have to ask anybody for anything. And I just went hard at work trying to take care of my children, right. but didn't realize I was going to be leaving them at home. Ruth, where did it all start, the Pointer Scissors? Where'd you... In uh, Oakland, California. Oakland, California. Mm -hmm. And uh, just three of you, were there other siblings? There were four of us. Four. Myself, Anita, Bonnie, and June. The the, 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 the the famous Pointer Sisters, I yes. mean, you kind of, you know, like, th it was a threesome. Well, we were kind of famous the four, too. <laughs> I but, mean, we were... Later, later, I just, yeah. the three of you, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, later it was the three of us, because the four of us, we did, we were the first African-American female group to play the Grand Ole Opry. We got our first Grammy with the four of us for a song that Anita and Bonnie wrote, Fairy Tale. Uh, Elvis recorded it. Mm. And then Bonnie decided to go solo, and it left us with three, me, Anita, and June. Huh. And, and the success came again. Big time. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in the book, you talk about the, uh, obviously the ups yeah. and the downs yeah. with drugs. Yeah. And that was um, a serious problem with the family. It was a serious problem for me, you know. Be, and whenever anyone in a family is having that problem, it is a family oh, problem. Right. And I was having that problem, you know. And I didn't uh, have a lot of knowledge. Back in the six, 70s and 80s, there wasn't a lot of information about drug abuse or that it was bad. But no but, one was dying. But also you were doing crack, which yeah. was at that time, I mean, very, very serious Very stuff. serious. Very addictive. Yeah, very addictive. I didn't know if I was going to make it through that period. That came later, you know, in, in, uh, after the hits. And I really didn't know if I was going to make it through that. I got ill with viral meningitis and almost died. And other complications with my health, my teeth. I had to have my mouth completely reconstructed. Wow. Oh, thank you. You look did great. a good job, though. <laughs> yeah, you, you look terrific. Now, after they came, it, the drug abuse came after the hits, primarily. Like, was it a come down? Was it uh, you missed uh, being at the very top? What drove you to that? No, no, it wasn't that we missed being at the top. It was just we were just riding a wave. I was just trying to support my family and just trying to stay above water. You know, it was uh, a time that we weren't aware of how it was supposed to go. I think. Plus, you know. so, is it not part of the, the culture when you hear yeah. sex, drugs, and rock and roll? Or music, oh, it's very right? real. It's very real. And the people are there to, to accommodate you everywhere you go. Right. You there, there are a lot of people around. Yes, people around. Oh, yeah. You, right? Oh, yeah. And during the 70s, I mean, there were, there were publications that said cocaine was no more dangerous than a glass of milk, you know. And that's the time when I came up in Los Angeles and Oakland and San Francisco area, Haight Ashbury, you know, when it just wasn't considered dangerous. And but, once you get caught up in it, when, it, when you, um, the media catches up and realizes that it is dangerous and that it's deadly, it's too late. You're caught up in it. Right. You know, and, it's an addiction. And your sister, uh, June, she never really... My sister, June, had some problems, uh, I believe mental health problems, that we weren't uh, real aware of, you know, back in that time. There was not a lot of information about bipolar. There was not a lot of information about depression. And she went through some very traumatic times in her life that weren't dealt with the way they would deal with her today. So she was self-medicating to the very end. She was self-medicating to the very end, yeah. In the meantime, those songs, I mean, they make us feel great. Well, they that's really good. Do. We felt great doing them. You did. There was <laughs> yes. no, like, when, when you were churning out, let's see, well, let's listen to this for a second.
Oh, John. Yeah. I remember where I was doing my paper out listening to this song. It just made folks <laughs> happy on a really wide... Uh, it made everybody happy. I just thought yeah. it was fantastic. It makes us happy still. Uh, how, how tough was it putting this one together? I mean, was there drama behind the scenes or was, was no. this the really good time? You know, we always had a good time in the studio recording songs with Richard Perry and, and our previous uh, producer, uh, David Rubinson. We always had a great time in the studio. I miss those times. I mean, and back then, it was all done live. You mm. know, we didn't have uh, tracks that were done first and then come sing over it. You talked about uh, supporting your family financially. Did <laughs> From the outside looking in, you should be a super duper millionaire right now. Um, did you guys make out okay? Managers, were they fair to you? Record companies, that kind of thing? We had our bouts with managers and record companies and were not informed all the time when things were going on, like when if there was a merger going on with a company. We were the last people to know about those types mm -hmm. of things, and our records sometimes got lost in that transition, you know, not knowing why it uh, wasn't promoted properly. So, Ruth, why did you want to do the book? Because I know it was difficult for you to put yeah. it together, and you were concerned about your kids reading the book. I'll tell you the truth is that it, the offer, the, the uh, uh, opportunity came to me. I wasn't looking for it. <clears throat> A young man by the name of Mar Marshall Terrell, there's my book partner, I call him, offered me to um, came to me with a, um, an opportunity to participate in a previous book before this called Rock and a Heart Place, where he was doing a compilation of 10 artists from different bands, Prince and Ozzy Osbourne, different people that were doing a short story of 10 different artists. And he asked if I wanted to be a part of it. And I said, yeah. And it was all about, you know, going through uh, trials and tribula tribulations of, of rock, the rock and roll world and then having some redemption. And I said, sure. And I, the more I talked to him, he said, I know there's more to this. <laughs> and would you ever consider doing a book on your own just about you? And I was like, well, mm, I have. <laughs> well, we're glad you did. By the way, you mentioned the kids in the first line of the book. Uh, where are they? What are they doing? I have five children, actually not children anymore. Um, my oldest daughter, Fawn, is in Arizona. Uh, she, she practices Muslim faith, and I uh, just saw her last week I was there. And uh, I have a son in Los Angeles who uh, sings and plays in a band. Um, my middle daughter, Issa, who sings with me now. Oh. And twins, 22 years old, Allie and Connor Sales, from my latest husband. And, uh, Your latest and... Present and husband. My latest present and final. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good for you. Good for you. All right, well, this it, it's a really gripping book, and if you're fans of the Point of Sisters like we are, you're going to love this. You're not going to want to put it down. It's great. Thank it's you. called Still So Excited. My Life is a Pointer Sister. It's out now. We're so happy to meet you in Thank person. Thank you. I'm happy to meet you, too. I love nice. New York. Nice. Real quick. Hey, did you get any money, by the way, for the soundtrack, too? Summer Lovers. Remember that movie, Summer Lovers? Daryl Hannah was jumping around on the beach. So along excited? With Peter. Yes. Yes. Good. Thank you. <laughs> That's how I first... Uh, Absolutely. I think this introduced me to the song, and then I was very happy I met the movie along the way. Boy, that movie's intense. Uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. Good stuff. Thank you very much. Ruth Thank Pointer. you for having me.